I guess we can, uh, like, a lot of this stuff from about SATs and universities, a lot of it is like in the future, and since most of the audience here is like grade 11 and grade 10, um, this is something that you should get started right now. So, uh, please. So, I'm a high school student at Western Canada High School, but I'm also a biomedical researcher at the University of Calgary, and I used to be a researcher at the University of Alberta as well. So, so far I've completed three <coughs> bigger projects and two, or two smaller ones. Uh, next slide. And so this one was one particular big project that I uh, submitted into the Canada-wide science fair, which I won a silver medal for. It's one of the one of Canada's first marijuana impairment detection devices. And uh, so, like current devices aren't very reliable. And so this is like a saliva sensor that police can use to see if someone is high or not. So it's like a breathalyzer, but for marijuana. Uh, next slide. Um, this one was a project I did at the University of Alberta, um, and it's sort of just, usually water uh, freezes at zero degrees Celsius, or we believe that the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius, but uh, there's this phenomenon called supercooling, and there are certain agents that can cause water to freeze faster or freeze slower, and that was my research project at the University of Alberta. Next slide. And this is a project that I'm working on right now using uh, proteins and antifreeze agents. I'm trying to create a uh, solution that can basically allow us to preserve organs for transplant for a lot longer than the current 24 hour time limit. Um, so that's something that I'm doing currently and I'm sponsored and everything. And okay, next slide. Um, I've also been published in three papers. I've done three science talks and I've been featured on the media three times. So there is a bit of a glamorous part of this for our research. And uh, one thing I need to mention is um, a lot of the research that high school students usually get into is bio or, bio or chemical research. Um, in terms of physics, there's mostly like, um, th like theory and stuff, but Biology and chemistry seem to be more of the sexier and glamorous uh, science subjects that people most really go into. So, uh, yeah, next slide, please. And so these are the papers I've been published in the American Chemical Society, which is pretty cool, and these two are the just random ones. Next slide. Uh, I did a TED talk. <laughs> next slide. Uh, at the University of Alberta. Uh, next slide. Next slide, next slide, next slide. Next slide. <laughs> so, uh, this part is mostly to sort of like, okay, so how do you get actually get into research? I started in grade 10, um, and to be honest, I started sending out emails to professors. A lot of people, when they get into university, they like do this type of research, or, um, and they send emails out. And really, it's a similar process here. I ended up sending around 400 emails in the spring break of my grade 10 year, but unfortunately, most of them uh, did not reply or their labs were full. I actually, uh, if you want to apply in grade 10, you should apply maybe, or start sending out emails in December or January because the grade 11s are all clamoring for the spots and uh, if they, you, if they get to the professors first, they're gonna hire the grade 11s because, well, they have one more year on you. And uh, professors are already taking a huge risk by hiring a, a high school student. So the earlier you apply, then the, early, the better chance you might get one. Um, with my University of Calgary application to get a research project, I didn't actually get into one. Um, I actually ended up going to the University of Alberta for two months in 2018 to work on the research project there, and I got recommended down back to the University of Calgary. So it shows that it's really, really hard to get one, and um, if you're willing to go live in Edmonton for two months, University of Alberta has a lot more opportunities, not to mention a lot more funding, so uh, sometimes you might actually get paid. Um, in terms of hours when I'm working in research, I work around 36 hours per week on my research projects, and over the summer, I've been working um, 80 hours per week, which so it's really just like six to nine, uh, six a.m. to nine p.m. I go to the lab, I uh, get home at around 10, and so it's a lot of work. 
And a lot of people at school, they're saying, oh, Jesse, your marks aren't that great. But I say, well, I have a lot more stuff to do. Can I object for a second? Don't listen to them. Because half the time, when um, universities look at your applications, they want to look at long-term projects as well as long-term um, progress that you're making, especially if it's an independently facilitated project. It really like helps you stand out amongst like the crowd. And that's even like still the status quo if you're applying to post-grad or grad school. So. Don't listen to them. You're doing great, kid. Okay. All right. This is great. Um, so in terms of applying, again, uh, it's better for if you do it in grade 10, but grade 11s, don't worry. You still have the chance to uh, apply for some as well. Um, there is actually currently exists a program called Hires in Alberta. I usually just say, oh, don't apply to Hires because a lot of, a lot of the stuff is like you – they pair you with a professor and then you get to do your project under a professor and but the problem is the ideas that the professor has sort of just become the project that you're doing if you want to make your own change in the world if you want to do your own thing then you should try and seek out these projects independently and I have to say that um, when you're doing this type of research like we had a lot of speakers uh, talk about computer science if you get, if you can teach yourself computer science, it's actually very, very useful in the research field. Um, I have a friend who also went to me, uh, with me to Canada Wide Science Fair. He did a computer science project and he tried to like create an algorithm that could detect Alzheimer's disease by using like a voice engine. And he ended up working like maybe three hours per week and he got a project that won the same medal as me when I had to work like 10 times as much as, uh, harder than he did. So yeah, that's just something that you have to do. Hires, they actually do pay you at the University of Calgary. If you apply independently, um, sometimes you get paid, sometimes you do not. I do not get paid. Um, but at the University of Alberta, if you apply there, then there is a chance that you can get paid quite a good amount of money. Um, I have a friend that works at the University of Alberta right now as a high school researcher and he works, and he gets about $20 an hour. So it's pretty good. Um, next slide, please. And oh, it's sort of, uh, when you're applying, it's sort of just emailing as many professors as you can. Although you, you do want to research into which professors you're actually emailing, because you want to email the ones whose research interests match yours. Um, this is a QR code for my blog, which I post like oh some stuff God. about oh. applying <laughs> into these labs. Currently, I don't have anything posted right now, but in the next week or so, I will. Stop uh, talking, Kevin. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so a big part of coming up with uh, doing research is coming up with your own ideas. Um, there, or there's actually two ways you can sort of do it. A lot of high school students will come up to a professor, and because we're under 18, the professor sort of just says, "Okay, um, I'm going to have you work on a project of mine, and then we're going to sort of you can present this at the science fair or whatever." But I feel like this is sort of greasy and you shouldn't do it. Although if you want results, I guess um, it is also something that you can do. Although when I'm doing my research projects, I do like to come up with my own ideas. Um, and there is like a huge creative process in, in it. You really have to research into the niche ideas and see what you can do. A lot of students, they come into the research world and they say, oh, I want to cure cancer. but. To be realistic, you aren't going to do that. If you want to make an impact, you can sort of research into a niche field and then make impact in that smaller field, like ice cream creation. No one heard, has heard about that before, but uh, the stuff I did in there was pretty cool. So, uh, next slide. Oh, uh, next slide. Okay, so opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. When you're doing this research, there are a bunch of different fair, science fairs you can enter into. And uh, when you're applying for college, this is sort of the thing that the colleges are looking for. It's not enough to just do the research. You actually have to go and participate in these contests. You uh, have to um, do good in them. So these are the main ones that are available in Canada. For the Intel ICEF, um, this is the world's biggest uh, science fair. Uh, science fair. And uh, the grand prize is 75,000 US dollars, which is quite a hefty amount. But it's really, really, really hard for a Canadian to get in. 
Uh, the only way you can get in as a Canadian is if you apply through the Team Canada portal. So there's this organization that basically runs all the science fairs in Canada called the Youth Science Canada. And they host the Canada-wide science fair every year. And they also try and choose eight people from all across Canada to go as a part of Team Canada to the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. Now the Americans have it a lot easier than us because every state gets to send like eight people, but uh, as Canada, Every, this entire country gets to send eight people. Last year they sent um, seven people, or seven projects, because one of them was a partner project. So, uh, yeah, if you want to check out how to like apply to that, go to my blog. Um, Google Science Fair is a lot more um, like erratic with their schedule. Um, some years they'll have it, some years they won't. But this Google Science Fair doesn't have as much prestige as the Intel uh, Science and Engineering Fair. Now I am speaking as if you win the entire thing. If you win the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair, congratulations. You can apply to any college in the United States and you'll probably get in. You don't even have to submit your grades. They'll just let you in for free. But with the Google Science Fair, um, what's good about it is if you do well in it, there is a lot of press. There is a lot of... Uh, attraction around your work and work because Google is a huge company that has this type of influence that can sort of bring your research up. Um, but the most common two science fairs that Canadians can enter into is the Canada-wide science fair and the Sanofi Biogenius. Sanofi Biogenius one is solely for biology projects. So if you have something uh, there, you can just search up Sanofi Biogenius Canada online and you can apply through there. They're still accepting applications now. I think the deadline might be January 1st. So if you already have a research project and you want to do it, um, I would advise you apply to that. And uh, this, you can, there's a regional provincial competition and then you move on straight to nationals and then to internationals. There's really no regional, like uh, citywide competition first. It's just provincial, national, international and you have to get first place every single time to advance to the next uh, stage. So you have to get first in your province to go to nationals, first in nationals to get to, uh, to internationals. With the Canada-wide science fair, a lot more people get in. Um, every year there's about 500 people from all of Canada that get in, and every year Calgary sends a team of 13 students to, get it, uh, to go to the science fair. Um, and then there are like certain categories inside uh, this team, there's the beginner, there's intermediate, and then there's a senior project. Uh, senior projects are grade 11 and beyond. Intermediate is uh, grade 10 and under to a certain age limit, and then there's a beginner, which I don't know what age you have to be to be in the beginner category. But usually it's like elementary school kids or junior high if, you want, if you're doing beginner. Uh, Canada-wide science fair, you just apply through the Calgary Youth Science Fair, and that's how you try and get into Canada-wide. Um, but more information can be found on this through your school. Uh, most schools sort of just have a teacher or a counselor to deal with these regional competitions. And so yeah, that's how you apply for these science fairs. I'm not sure if I have more slides, but uh, I'm sure the next slide. Oh, and uh, once you get into these, uh, research opportunities, and once you start doing your own research, a big part of it is publishing. Um, if there's like this whole new world of uh, Hirsch indexes and like impact factors for these uh, papers, um, and it's like basically the higher number of impact factor, your paper, uh, your, the paper you publish it in, in the journal you publish in, the more clout you have. Um, and like the better you are. So in the research world, publishing papers is sort of like the currency. The more papers you have published, the better of a scientist you are, although there's a lot of controversy around this. But um, this type of stuff looks really, really good on your resume and also if you're applying anywhere because they want to say, oh, this high school student published a paper, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so You'll, I can't really tell you much about publishing right now because you would have, first have to get into the research opportunity first to learn more about this. But just know that this is something that you can and should do once you get into the field. And that's it.